don't feel like doing anything. I feel so unmotivated. I'm afraid of dying. I feel invisible sometimes. Why do people not look at me? Is it because of my looks? Because they can't stand to look at me? Am I ugly? Why do I get more attention in Second Life? Well, you know, look at me. I mean, well, I do, you know, so with guys sometimes. Well, okay, kinda. Why don't I get hit on more in real life? I'm the same person, aren't I? Seriously, why not? If I'm the same person, acting the same, just as witty and intelligent, why don't guys hit on me in real life? 2.45 p.m. I just threw out the half gallons of ice cream I had left in the freezer. I feel like I can start fresh tomorrow. I won't eat anymore. I can do this. At least this is what I tell myself every time. 7 p.m. I have a friend who keeps asking me why I'm asking me if I'm dating anymore. Of course I'm not. Who wants me? No one. I hear guys talking about beautiful women all the time. These guys have trophy wives and girlfriends. I guess I should be happy I'm not put on a pedestal like that. But sometimes I want to be. I want to be adored and wanted and loved by a guy. No one wants me. Have you seen me lately? I weigh 240 pounds. I'm huge. I'm fat. I'm tired of being unwanted. There's a great meme that went around Facebook. The quote was, yes, I'm single. You're going to have to be amazing to change that. Why can't I believe this? I think it's an amazing statement. It's so true. I won't settle for less. Why can't I trust this? There's another article that a friend shared with me recently. It's called Fat and Fucking by Rebecca Jordan. And it reads, I slept with a good friend several, several years ago. It was recreational and a little reckless, but the hows and whys and breakdowns aren't important. I want to tell you about what he said to me after we'd spent several blissful, hilarious hours together being naked and happy. <clears throat> we lay there chilling out and smiling up at the ceiling in silence. I've never been with a girl like you, he said in a friendly but hesitant voice. You see big people, but I guess I just didn't. I mean, you feel really good. I guess you just never know what, what's under people's clothes. It's taken me a long time to figure out exactly what he was trying to tell me, in the moment especially. I turned away so he couldn't see my burning cheeks, muttered some vague agreement, and, didn't, and did the old fat shame shuffle as quickly and efficiently as I could. Us, us fat kids know the dance step well. You're busy being you, and then somebody reminds me that you're not you, you're fat you. You remember that fat is a bad thing. You let the shame well up inside you, and then you push the shame down and continue with whatever it was that you were doing with your life. I think my friend's unprecedented trip to fat sex land blew his mind in a good way. At the time, he was trying to put this sexy paradigm shift into words. He was starting to realize the very thing that I knew intellectually at the time, but <clears throat> excuse me, couldn't quite believe about myself and other fat people, that we are sexual and that our bodies are not wrong and that we have the same right and access to pleasure and happiness as everyone else. Love your body. If you love someone, you put up with your, their shortcomings and try to do things to make them happy. You care about their health and their safety and their quality of life. Loving your body doesn't mean that you have to think your body's perfect. It doesn't even mean that you have to make peace with your body. But if you do, do want to do sexy stuff, you and your body need to be on the same team. On some level, you have to have goodwill towards your body. If you hate your flesh, you'll probably find ways to punish or ignore it. You'll never allow good things to happen to it. There are some fat people out there for whom positive body image comes naturally, and others who have fought hard for years to shed the shackles of body negativity. Most of us still struggle with various degrees of body shame, denial of our physical fit selves, and our hang-ups and insecurities about our appearance. All those emotional struggles are also common to people who don't identify as fat, and they can be incredibly daunting battles for anyone. 7.45 p.m. Told my therapist a couple weeks ago that when something isn't going right, I try to think about it and change my perspective, my perception. I guess it's kind of like a paradigm shift in a way. I have to stop thinking about what other people think of me. Who cares what they think? I have to think about what I want, focus on me. I read somewhere that I should live as if. I, if, I, if I live as if I'm beautiful, or as if I'm confident, or as if I'm talented, I will be. If I see these traits in me rather than the negative traits, 
or <clears throat> excuse me, I will see these traits in here rather, rather than the negative traits. What if I live as if I was rich? Hmm. 8.18 p.m. Gracie's dancing with some friends in Second Life. The party is for this great guy she's known for years. These people are wonderful. I've never met them in the physical world, but they're to, as real to me as if I could reach out and touch them. I have known a few of them for many years now. We have been through so much, and they know me and accept me for who I am. They know Gracie as Chris, and Chris as Gracie. I don't hide who I am. I don't role play. On that topic, my brother told me he didn't think I was myself on Saturday night for my opening. He thought I was playing a role. That is really interesting, considering I felt more like myself when I took off the makeup, when I brushed my hair. It's also interesting the idea of makeup and the mask. The avatar is a mask. My friend Jackie commented on my show this Saturday night. She said, an avatar is an avatar is an avatar. I love that. Very Gertrude Stein meets Second Life. I am an avatar of my own existence. I am an avatar of my avatar. I am a rose. The end. <laughs> Thank you. And now, back to the laptop ensemble. Thank you. We'll be doing a piece yeah. for oh, Music Box <laughs> and Laptop. Thank you. Thank you. This is Amy Gordon's piece. Here she is. She'll be playing the Music Box. And it's in six one minute movements. I think so. And then bring them over to social issues. It's interesting what's in. Every time I go back to meet with somebody at class, they go in. The performers are Nate Twanaloot here and Matt Lordy on laptops. Amy Gordon on music. Everybody keeps shifting.